For my kombucha, I always stick with the same brew strength, six bags of tea for every one gallon of kombucha. However, I am deeply in the minority there because most brewers will swear by eight to 12 bags. Some go to 15 or 16 or more. They say that the flavor only gets better with more tea and that it's incomparable to the weak brew I've been making. But to me, six bags has always tasted great no matter what brand I'm using. It's got a sweet apple cider taste. It's strong without overwhelming any other flavor additions I would wanna make. It tastes just like a bottle from the store, except it's the right sweet sour balance that I would like. So I've always been reluctant to try this out, not just for the flavor, but tea is one of the biggest expenses I have in brewing. And I go through on average about 550 bags of tea every year. It would mean twice as many boxes to buy, twice as many bags to strain back out. And depending on if I go bottom of the barrel cheap or organic whatever, could be an extra $60 a year on tea alone, which isn't unreasonable, but I tend to think in decades and uh, it's a lot to add on when I like the flavor of what I've got. But we're not here for accounting, we're here for better kombucha. So let's see how they compare. So for this experiment, I started with my standard recipe for kombucha. I brought four cups of water to a boil, cut the heat, and then added my tea. Six bags of black tea for the first batch, and 12 bags for the second. I let them both steep for 15 minutes before I strained them out and stirred in one cup of sugar. And to these, I'm gonna add exactly two cups of starter from a previous batch. And now I'm just gonna add water up to the one gallon mark. I'm gonna give them each a stir. And then I'm adding a leftover pellicle to each. because I do think it helps. I do see some potential problems here though because the tea isn't just for flavoring, it's a source of nutrition for the SCOBY. If you suddenly double that, I imagine there's gonna be an effect. If the yeast are able to ferment at all, they could proliferate too much, give an imbalance in the culture, and maybe throw in some yeasty off flavors. And if they're not able to ferment it, it could leave us with the lingering taste of black tea, which I find abhorrent. Or it could just taste better definitely one of those options. So I'm just gonna let each of these run until they're properly sour. Uh, I'm not too concerned with the timing because it's not a race, I just want better kombucha. So I'll see you then. Seven days have passed and these both have a pretty good punch of acid, so uh, I think we're ready to get started. They both have the noticeable vinegar smell to them, but uh, this 12 bag version, it's got a maltier, richer quality to it as well. But I am gonna put that aside for now because we need to bottle up our kombucha. And for this, I'm gonna be doing two different bottles. In the first, I'm just gonna make a regular plain kombucha. And then in the second, I'm gonna make a pineapple kombucha to see how a flavored bottle will fare. For the plain kombucha, I'm just gonna do 14 grams of simple syrup. This is my go-to recipe anytime I am not on camera. And then for our pineapple, it's another very straightforward recipe. I'm gonna start with 100 grams of pineapple juice. I'm also gonna add eight grams of simple syrup. And that just helps balance out some of the acid from the pineapple. Another very simple recipe, but I think the pineapple flavor comes through very clearly. It's not too sour, it's not too sweet. If I have to brew a kombucha for somebody who's skeptical, this is the one I go with. And I'll say that of all the recipes I've tried for kombucha, these are probably the two I come back to the most. So if anything's changed or significantly improved, I think I should be able to tell. And then I'm just gonna do this one more time. And once these are ready, I'm gonna give them three days at 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, just to let them carbonate then we should be ready to compare. All right, we are back. We've had time to carbonate. We've had time to chill it back down. Now we're ready to see who wins. Uh, we've got our six bags over here and our 12 bags on this side. Uh, and my main concern here is that I'm gonna like qualities of both. I feel like our six bags might taste too weak. Our 12 bags might taste too much like tea, but I'll appreciate the richness. And then I will, of course, be tempted to try an eight versus 10, which I don't want to do. And now that I've got my strainer, let's give these a try. A little 
better carbonation too in the 12 bags. I'm gonna start with our lighter brew. It's acidic, it's sweet, tastes a little bit like apple cider. Uh, there's some vinegar there, there's a little bit of yeast funk. It's overall quite pleasant. Perhaps a notch sweeter than I like, but otherwise pretty enjoyable. Our 12 back kombucha smells pretty much the same, but uh, there might be a little bit of maltiness, but not nearly as much as there was in the full vessel. There is a distinct difference in the taste between these two. This one's definitely much richer, much fuller. It's sweeter. There is some of that lingering black tea flavor, which I don't care for. Uh, so kind of like I expected. I appreciate the richness, but it's not sour enough, and uh, I don't really like that black tea flavor. If I had to pick between these two, I would definitely pick the six bag though. I do appreciate that crisp, sour flavor. This one's just got far too many notes of black tea. Next up, we've got our pineapples. Once again, we've got our six bags on this side and our 12 bags over here. Smells like pineapple juice and nothing else. Smells kind of the same. Very bright, very acidic. It's very strongly pineapple, both in uh, the smell and the flavor. I'm not really picking up any kombucha funk. Well carbonated. Overall, just kind of how I want my pineapple kombucha to taste. But let's try our stronger version. This one's noticeably much more muted of a pineapple flavor. Uh, I'm not really picking up the black tea anymore, but it's still noticeably sweeter as well. It's a little richer, it's just not distinctly much of anything. It's not acidic enough to really be clearly kombucha. It's got a thicker mouthfeel, but it's mostly just kind of muted everything. Uh, once again, this is far and away the winner. So does this mean that six bags is better than 12? Well, yes, to me, it does. Because for me, this failed on two fronts. When it's just plain, it had too much of that black tea flavor. I don't really want that. And then for our flavored brews, it just kind of masked the flavor of what I was trying to add to it. The richness is interesting, but it's not generally what I want in a kombucha. I usually want a kombucha to be very light and crisp and refreshing. Something to cut through the richness of whatever I'm having it with. I could see this working better for some specific scenarios though, like if I was trying to brew with hops again, there was a little bitterness. If I was trying to make it rich like a beer, I could see wanting to use 12 bags and then really working hard to hide that black tea flavor. But for most other scenarios, I think I'm gonna pass. And I don't even think I really wanna try eight to 10 bags because <sighs> this is just how I like it. This is the strength of kombucha I enjoy. I think I'm gonna keep on making it this way. But that's just me, it's all personal taste. So if you're not sure what you like better, I would say just give it a try. And that's it for this time. So thank you for watching. This is Reckless Booch.